So I was very inspired. I said, you know, I've decided I'm going to go pursue a career in entrepreneurship. And then, the, you know, you'd ask yourself, right? You're at these phases in your life and you say, I want to do X. And I promise you, you go talk to anyone or you tell someone, let's say, some well-wisher of yours or perhaps even your parents or someone, relatives, you say, I want to do X, right? I promise you, eight out of ten times they'll tell you what you don't have to get there. They'll say, you don't have A, you don't have B, you've not learned how to do C and D and X and Y. I promise you, that is exactly what happens to a lot of us. We want to do something and we're told why we're not good enough to get there or why we don't have what it takes to do that. And if you applied that logic, and which I did, by the way, to uh, at the juncture, at that juncture in 2005, when I was trying to leave, or I was making up my mind about leaving Morgan Stanley, was, okay, I want to start a company, right? That part was clear. I said, I want to create a company, I'll create a product company, we'll work on some great technology, and we'll, you know, I wanted to create the next Apple, basically. And, uh, and then I was like, okay, do I know the first thing about creating a product? Do I know the first thing about uh, any of the things that you perhaps may need. How do you build a team? How do you raise funding? How do you, uh, you know, do marketing? How do you, how do you structure sales? I, do, I knew nothing at that point. So if I'd gone and asked any of our, uh, you know, our so-called relatives or even family, I said, hey, what do you think I should start a company? I'm sure they'd have told me you don't have all these things. You don't know anything about all these things. You shouldn't start a company. So anyway, at that time I realized it's not like I wanted to go right there. And I said, okay, if I want to know, get where I want to get, which is in a few years, which for me was about a four or five year time frame, if I wanted to start a company, what is it that I need to do today to get there? So I asked the question, and it was a pretty straightforward answer. Number one, get to a product company. If you want to learn how to build products, get to a product company. And two, if you wanted to learn about startups, get to a startup. You're never going to get or learn anything about startups by working at a multinational corporation. Startups are fundamentally different animals. They operate very differently, they're structured differently, and the way they derive their energy and all is very different from an MNC or a large corporation. It doesn't have to be a multinational. And so these are the two things, right, that just made a lot of sense to me. I said, I must go to a startup, I must join a product company, I mustn't go join a startup which is again trying to get a bunch of clients and then, you know, send work back to to Bangalore or wherever, you know, $20 an hour there, build them $100 an hour here, make the money. That's one kind of, by the way, entrepreneurship. You could do that. There are lots of people who do that. But I was quite clear that I wanted to do the product kind of entrepreneurship and said, okay, let's try to find a company that can do that. So that's ended up, that ended up taking me to, uh, to, to pursuing startups. And all startups at that time were outside New York. And again, this, this brought me to this, this juncture where I had to make, I had a conflict, or I had, I had to make a choice. It was a difficult choice. I had this brilliant life in New York City. Uh, great people, great apartment, great everything. And, uh, and then I had to now uproot myself because what I wanted was not there in New York City. What I wanted to do was somewhere else. It was either in Silicon Valley. At that time, I was considering only the US. And I said, it's either in Silicon Valley or some other small hub where there are startups. I started looking, I started looking. And it became clear to me that whatever it is, I had to leave New York. There was no way I'd be able to stay in New York and pursue the, the entrepreneurship dream, so to speak. I'm highlighting this conflict because I think things like this come up in all our lives. And my, a lot of my friends, right, at that time, even when I go back and I think about those days, a lot of my friends gave me very good reasons to not make the move. I, I, I am serious. Uh, some of my friends who still, by the way, work at Morgan Stanley, they all told me, you know, but how about A, and how about green card, and how about this? And you know, if you do this, then you're H1B, and if not H1B, you'll lose this, and then you won't get green card, and then you won't get citizenship, and you, you won't be able to buy that BMW you wanted, and all of these things, right? And all of them gave me very good reasons for why I should not pursue the path of just upping from New York and going somewhere else. And, and so it was, a very, it was a difficult choice. I had to leave my friends behind. That's very hard, by the way. It's much easier to leave material things behind, right? You can leave your car and leave your, uh, perhaps your bookshelf or whatever it is that you have, that you, or your study desk or whatever. All those things, yeah, you can deal with it. It's very hard to leave your friends behind. I remember experiencing that emotion when I left IIT, right? Finished four years, you're, you're best of friends, and then, you know, they're not there anymore every day next to you. And so that was a different, uh, I, was, I mean, I knew what it felt like. It felt really hard. 
to you know leave all of them and say bye New York and bye all of you and I'll go hole up in some other place. So what ended up happening is I got a I got a a job at Washington D.C. Uh, a startup in the D.C. area, and I I was actually one of the earliest engineers on that team. I was like engineer number three on that team. So it was a really small company, and I was joining them basically to to get them somewhere. They really hadn't you know become established or anything like that. And I made that choice. I said, you know what? Uh, partying in New York City can wait. Uh, you know, all those uh, all those moments, all those friends, all those girls, they can all wait. Let's just focus on entrepreneurship right now. We'll figure out what to do. And as I, how I ended up going to a company called Hillcrest Labs. Uh, as I said, a very young company. I was one of the earliest engineers on that team. And... Uh, and I dove, dove right in, essentially. And I don't think this part is hard to figure out. Clearly, at this point, you know, what I was looking for, I did actually get at Hillcrest. I learned the ropes of pretty much everything at Hillcrest. I learned how to write code better. I learned how to write, build products. I learned how to iterate on products, how you go from prototype to you know, something pre-production, how you go to alpha, how you go to beta, how do you use a test. You know, how do you do all these things? How, do you, how are they done in real companies? How do you do it when you have a budget? How do you do it when you have a time constraint, when you have deadlines? How do you do it when you have resource constraints? You don't have as many developers as you want. Uh, you have to manage people. You have to manage time. You have to manage uh, you know, projects and all of these things, right? All of these things was something I actually picked up only at Hillcrest Labs. And that was, the, that was one of the best experiences I had because it took me closer to where I wanted to get as, a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as, as an entrepreneur. I mean, I was not yet an entrepreneur, but I knew that that's what I needed, excuse me, to get there. And, and one of the things that uh, has always helped me and, has always, and helped me at Hillcrest, and I, I'll say this to all of you, is that opportunity will always come your way. The question is, will you, will you grab it? Nobody's going to come and give it to you on a platter. Even at Hillcrest, nobody came and said, oh, Ravi, do you want to go run the Bangalore team? We're setting up a 20-person team in Bangalore. Do you want to go run it? Nobody asked me for it. I asked, but I was prepared for a no. I asked, I said, hey, maybe I can help with this. Maybe I can help train those people. Maybe I can go interview them. You have to grab opportunity. It's not going to just be given to you on a platter. That's, that's what I learned at Hillcrest. That's, why, that's what I think everyone should do. Anyway, and so th when, I, when I was uh, at Hillcrest, that's when the seeds of the idea that we had for the company that I run today, Mobstack, those kind of you know, started festering in the late uh, second half of 2008, really. I would say almost end of 2008. Uh, and on the screen is actually uh, the, the, my co-founder, Sharath, on the right side there. I happens to be standing outside Gajendra Circle in that picture. But at that time, I realized, okay, this is it. I think I've done this for a while. Now is, time, now is the time to plunge in. Let's go start that company because I've picked up the right set of skills that I think is the, are, are necessary. Uh, I've uh, gained some experience in doing some of the things that may be relevant. So... What better time to go do it than now? Again, there was a lot of conflict, and I won't bore you with the same conflict example, but if you think about, you know, and we also took the decision to do it in India. That was the other big thing for us, right? So both Sharath and I were in the US at that time. Both of us had been living there for years. And we said, we want to create a product company that we agreed on. We wanted to create a global product company. We agreed on that. And the other thing we agreed on, we said, let's do it out of India. No one's done it before. At least we don't know very successful examples. Can we create an Apple-like company out of India? That's really what we asked ourselves. It sounds, it sounds really uh, you know, audacious, right, if you think about it. It's like, what are you talking about? But, but to be very honest with you, that's what we were thinking. We said, you know, we'll do it. Let's try it. Let's move to Bangalore and, and, and do this thing. Uh, and so that's an, that ended up happening. We, we actually started planning our startup. We worked on an idea. We worked on a number of things. We brainstormed over Skype. Because at that time, Sharath had just moved a little, a few months ahead of me, he was already in India. And then, and then a few months later, which is uh, in, in 2009, uh, which is the first half of 2009, really, that's when we kind of got started. June 2009 is when Mobstack got off the ground. Uh, we, we, were, uh, we were exactly two people. We had given up uh, everything we had there. We had moved to uh, Bangalore Lock, Stock, and Battle. That's, the, that's a picture of us uh, on the road trying to raise uh, funding, by the way. So uh, we usually wear suits when we're going to meet investors. I mean, that's not the reason why I'm wearing a jacket today, but still. Uh, that's, that's, uh, that's what we used to do a lot. In, the, in those days, 
we didn't wear the wear jackets, so we kind of looked identical in that picture. So we took a picture of ourselves, and we were on the road a lot. We would go and meet a lot of investors, and and here's the here's the thing about about entrepreneurship, right? Or I should just say, let's say something even simpler: raising money. If you want to tell someone, hey, look, I have this idea, give me money to execute it. It's much harder than you think. And out of every 10 people, at that time we were only raising angel angel funding, as it's called. It's not a lot of money. It's in the it's in the it's in the range of typically, you know, for a company like us, 30 lakhs, 40 lakhs, perhaps. Not a lot of money. Not very little either. We didn't have all that money ourselves. When we got and you know, we would go meet these investors, right? And we'd go and meet anyone who's ready to take a meeting with us. And I, I kid you not, out of 10 people, nine people would say this is a stupid idea. You have no idea what you guys are talking about. They wouldn't say it in those words. People are generally nice and polite, right? Uh, and so they'd say, oh, yeah, interesting, I'm not so sure, etc." But only one out of those 10 would probably, you know, say, this is interesting, let's follow up on this. I want to keep you engaged. Let's have a couple of follow-up conversations. Maybe I'll invest. That's end that ended up happening, and that happens a lot, actually, in... Uh, in raising money and actually in many things related to entrepreneurship, you'll find that you're, you have to just keep, keep at it, keep at it. You have to be persistent. And if you like give up and the first person says no, maybe you shouldn't get into entrepreneurship. Because I promise you, the first person and the next 10 people are going to say no to you. And so what we ended up doing is we said, okay, let's get started. We didn't wait to get funded, actually, to get started. We said, let's set up a simple you know, office. So that is... A single room office that we set up. It's about one table. You could see a few people in that picture. And we started working on our product. We started building it. I was writing all the code. Uh, then I tried to get another person also to join me to write code. And that's how we, we actually got started. This was a long time ago, in 2009. And Sharat and I were all on, on the side trying to look for money, you know, trying to get funded for our company and all of that. And in 2009, by the way, the, the environment was pretty uh, difficult. It was pretty difficult for... Uh, Startups in particular, because there, there was a slowdown again at that point. A lot of companies, a lot of investors started getting edgy about investing in companies. So we, we started having a little bit of trouble. Now, it's not like my story ends there, right? It's not like we started Mobstack and then we just took off. I wish it was that way. It was not. We spent the first six months, you know, it took time to get someone to join us. We, took, we tried to convince, you know, some people to leave their job, join Mobstack, write code for us. So it takes a while before you can get all those things going. And then we have to go meet invest uh, not investors. We have to go meet customers, try to convince them about the product that we had, or at least we were building. Get them to say, if they were interested, get them to actually say, yes, I want to do a pilot. Or yes, you know, I think this makes sense. Maybe I'll buy your product or whatever. At that point, it was so early. We were not even charging for our product then. We were not saying, Yo, you have to pay us this much for it. We were still in that initial phase where we had just built a prototype or we had like an alpha version, we said, you know, this is what we have. Uh, just to clarify, what Mobstack does is we are a mobile cloud for publishers. We essentially help you create mobile websites and apps from your existing content. And the Hindu is our customer, as an example. So m.thehindu.com is powered by Mobstack. So we were trying to do this, right? We were going to all these publishers, all these customers, potential customers, and saying, will you buy our product? What do you think of this, et cetera? And I tell you, we, we did this like nonstop for six, seven months. Nobody, and I, and I mean it, nobody bought it. Nobody even wanted to follow up. And they said, oh, interesting, whatever. And it went nowhere. So zilch. Absolutely nothing for six months. And uh, we were really disillusioned, right? So we had completed a year at the company. 2009 June, we started. 2010 June, not a single customer, not a single user of our product. And it was very, it was very hard for us. We said. What do we do about this? I mean, clearly, we need someone to use our product. We need adoption. That's what we realized. We said, let's, let's get adoption. We'll worry about getting paid and all of those things later. Let's get adoption.